So first, I wanted to ask, you know, Gordon, you know, we, we have a patient who was presenting with metastatic disease, and as often happens, they, they often have the CT scan before the diagnosis. When would you go toward the bladder to make the tissue diagnosis versus the metastases? Well, I'm a urologist, I would always go towards the bladder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, but in all seriousness, Arlene, so I, I think that oftentimes um, the medical oncologists that we deal with in our system really prefer to get tissue from a metastatic site as it relates to tissue typing and genetic analysis mm -hmm. to, you know, maximally um, refine their therapeutic options. Um, however, uh, sometimes, you know, that sample is, is less than adequate or more samples required, in which case certainly um, we would go and, and resect, you know, this patient um, and uh, get as much tissue, at, certainly as would be required, you know, um, to be suitable for any analysis based on the, the size of the tumor here. So are you be re being referred patients who already have a tissue diagnosis, but they just need more tissue for special stains? Yes, we are. And, and so some of those things, um, oftentimes, you know, these... Um, you're right, these patients will kind of bypass us if they have you know, evidence of, of kind of locally advanced or metastatic disease that's identified by their primary physician or somebody else, you know, kind of initiating their workup and will go right to my medical oncology co colleagues. However, um, the challenge is, you know, as it relates to um, amount and volume of tissue, we can overcome pretty quickly, you know, as it, you know, from a local therapy perspective. And we can also address their local symptoms if they exist, right, um, which is another kind of piece of this here. Uh, which I think remains to be, you know, kind of spoken about. Okay. So due to Dr. Gordon's thoughtful application of cystoscopy, we had copious tissue, pdl one positive, no specific targetable mutations present. What do you think, Tien? What would you offer this patient? Yeah, so we're discussing a metastatic patient now with um, you know, ineligible for cisplatin um, based on his renal dysfunction. And so usually in this um, setting, I offer um, immunotherapy as a monotherapy. And we now have five agents approved um, targeting PD-1 and PDL one um, And so the, the question and the label change that happened last um, summer really was around um, using PDL one positivity in this patient uh, population. I think um, as we are seeing uh, more um, from Invigor 130, um, the, the data that were presented last month at ESMO really show us that the monotherapy atezolizumab patients um, do better um, when uh, they're, they're PDL1 positive at baseline. And those patients um, certainly do better on the monotherapy than the PDL1 negative. And so that really provides the framework and the data um, for which uh, we saw the label change. Um, so th this um, first line says plan ineligible patient. I, I do, um, you know, reach for our PD-1 inhibitors first. So what do you think, Betsy? Would you agree, or would you do anything different? So I agree, and I wouldn't do anything different. I'll just sort of speak to a couple of scenarios, not with this patient, but that we frequently see. And one is when they come to us. They have widespread metastatic disease, and we don't know their PDL1 status. Um, so here, we're fortunate due to your great collaboration with urology that it was already sent, and you have it at your initial consultation. But often, then we're asked, should we just make our best guess and go with immunotherapy, or should we play it safe and go with chemotherapy, or should we wait? And that's a common, um, challenging decision that we have. Typically, if we can wait, I do. I'll send tissue and try to wait so that we know and can choose immunotherapy versus chemotherapy. Um, but in my practice, if there's no time, we would start with chemotherapy with gemcitabine and carboplatin. Okay, so luckily we have information first yes. before yes. having to try. Always better. But I'm curious, what if this patient had extensive liver metastases? Would that alter your chemo choice or treatment choice? I think based on the data, um, it shouldn't, right? There's no clear data that, that having liver metastases patients do poorly. Um, again, I think this speaks to the point of where you're getting your biopsy, though. I think in that case, I would feel most comfortable treating based on pdl one high from all liver metastasis so that I know that the clonal evolution didn't sort of deplete the pdl one status on the metastasis. Um, but I'm always more nervous treating patients with liver metastases regardless really of what we choose. Yeah, and I think sometimes the location of that liver met, um, met um, may 
you know, impact my decision. So if it's really close to the common bile duct or something that looks like it's starting to impinge, we may be trying to get to an earlier response, right, so that we avoid um, hypobilirubinemia, biliary obstruction. And so in those patients, maybe we would be choosing chemo first um, to try to get a response quicker mm -hmm. um, rather than the uh, immunotherapy. How about you, Arlene? How do you approach liver mats? Well, it's a difficult choice at this point. We, you know, historical data has suggested the liver met patient doesn't always respond as well to an immune checkpoint inhibitor. I don't think we've done a deep dive to the Invigor 130 data to look at all the different subsets, and, and of course, nor should we use those to provide definitive recommendations, although we all use them to try to guide us in our choices because we know if we pick the wrong strategy for a patient with explosively growing disease, they may not have time to get on a better treatment. So patient selection does matter. So I, I don't know if they had vigorously growing liver mets, I might choose a chemotherapy regimen first just because they grow quickly and, and sometimes a single agent immunotherapy is like holding a garden hose on a three alarm fire. You just can't generate enough of immune response to make an impact. But uh, I, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing more of the Invigor 130 data to try to understand are there groups where the benefit is greatest, node only, which has typically had the best benefit overall from an immune checkpoint inhibitor, or will we see in pdl one high that it's still looking quite good in the setting of a liver metastasis patient? We'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see.